Welcome to the Super Abundant Life Podcast, where we teach the Bible in a simple, authentic, and practical way so that Christians can skillfully apply the Word of God to create supernatural results in every area of life. This is your host, Olaomi Brigway. So I'm going to move on now uh, to today's episode and I'm talking about imposter syndrome and I've titled this one imposter syndrome why you secretly feel undeserving of your hard earned successes. Hmm. Last episode, episode 72, I talked about shame. Imposter syndrome is like a sister to this one. These are things that hold us back. And the thing about it is people say, oh, imposter syndrome, women. This is not, this is, is, is not limited to women. Men too. Men too. By evidence, by observation, I've seen that men also deal with imposter syndrome. It is something that affects pretty much almost everyone on the face of the planet. So if that is the case, then it's something that is worth talking about. Okay. So imposter syndrome, why do you secretly feel undeserving of your hard earned successes? Why do you feel constantly that there's nagging thoughts that mm, you're not as good as you think you are and people are about to find out Okay, so what is what is I'm going to jump straight into this and I'm going to um, do it in three sections. First of all, I want to describe or define what imposter syndrome is. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the symptoms and also the damaging effects of imposter syndrome. And finally, in the third section and final section, I'm going to talk about how to overcome it. Now, bear in mind when I say overcome it, this is not a one time thing where, okay, now I'm free of imposter syndrome and that's it. No, this is a, it's maybe not a daily thing, but it's a seasonal thing. There will be seasons where you break in something new and then, you know, here comes those, those, those thoughts again, telling you that you don't deserve to be where you are, et cetera, et cetera. And full disclosure, when I say that almost everybody deals with this thing, I'm also talking about myself till today. (laughs) <laughs> till today, till today, till today, till today, till today. You know, I, it is something that I'm very mindful of and I'm very quick to pick it up, right? Till today, I still find myself wondering that, hey, all these, all these successes in my life, I'm, <laughs> who, who are they, to, when people talk about me, I'm like, eh, who are they talking about? Is it me, they, this person is talking about like this? When I see the faces of coaching clients light up, you know, with insight and, and, and the realization that, you know, something has broken, it is it, strong or they've been carrying for probably years because of the entrance of light is suddenly broken and you can see it all over their face and they're gushing and they say, Oh my goodness. Wow. You know, the coaching was this, that, that. you can see the results in their lives till today. I still look at myself and I say, Hey, is this me? As in, <laughs> Honestly, honestly, I'm telling you. So we are basically we are we are what we are in this what together. Okay, so we are in this together. <laughs> we are in this together. Um, so it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to feel like oh, you know, this is something I can never overcome. No, you must overcome it because it's in overcoming it that you can truly, truly fulfill your potential um, and what God has called you to be upon this earth. So what is imposter syndrome? So let's say you have just accepted a promotion or started a new job or business, or perhaps there's a, there's very little representation of your ethnicity or gender at the level you're playing on. So for example, I remember that, you know, for most of my leadership experience at you know in 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 my profession in education most of the years where i was in leadership and we're talking about probably 13 years or there about 12 or 13 years i was usually the only black person in the room not always but usually so there's that's what i mean by underrepresentation at, at your level right so maybe you are the only woman or very few women compared to men or the only black or very few black people compared to you know non-black people etc so that's what i mean by very little representation of your ethnicity or gender at the level that you're playing on now if you find yourself in any of these situations almost immediately almost immediately you find that this new level or being in that situation triggers 
crippling anxiety in you and why is that anxiety there why, why is it staying why are you feeling anxious when you receive a new promotion or you're working in a place where you are underrepresented in your gender or your or your race and you just feel afraid like oh my god i'm not supposed to be here i feel like a fraud the reason is because you think that your success is a fluke or a mistake or as christian is as we Christians say and do, we say, oh, it's, it's simply a miracle. It was just the grace of God that came upon me. It had nothing to do with me, right? So you feel that surely the people around you are more intelligent and deserving of this than you are. You are constantly battling self-doubt, insecurity, and a perpetual fear. Now, this is where imposter syndrome really kicks in. A perpetual fear that your inadequacies or your perceived inadequacies will be discovered and you will be exposed as a fraud. It's like somebody will pull back the curtain and say, hey, we've always known no, that you, you know, how did you get here? How did you get this role? How did you get promoted to this? Who gave you this job of senior leadership, right? That somebody will find out one day that, ah, this one is not qualified. Let us send her back to where she's coming from, right? That you'll be exposed as a fraud. And this phenomenon is called imposter syndrome. That's what imposter syndrome is. You feel undeserving of successes that were not bestowed upon you, but that you actually earned. But for some reason, your brain, your mind has somehow locked into something that has convinced you that no, 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 no. This is too much for me. I can't handle this. I can't handle this. I'm not ready for this level. This is not, it's not me. They're looking for here, etc. Now this concept was first introduced in 1978 by two psychology professors in the United States. Um, when they studied high achieving women and this actually usually this imposter syndrome is something that a lot of high achievers deal with so they study these high high achieving women and they discover that many of their female clients so these high achieving women seemed unable to internalize and accept their achievements so they, they worked hard, they, they're intelligent, they gave everything. Then they achieved the achievements, the success. And then for them to actually embrace it and internalize, it became a problem. Instead, right? Instead, in spite of consistent evidence of how good they were, they attributed their successes to other things that were outside of them that had nothing to do with them. So things like, oh, it was just a coincidence or, oh, it was just luck or, oh, it was just, you know, timing. The timing was just right. Or, oh, it's because of the contacts in my, you know, my network. People, somebody connected me and introduced me and that's how I got the promotion. Or, oh, they ascribe everything to their team and they say, you know, my team is great. They're the ones that did it or my boss did it or whatever it is. So actually own the success and internalize it was a massive struggle. So that's where the they called it initially imposter phenomenon and then over the years it has evolved into the term imposter syndrome so that's pretty much what imposter syndrome is that's what it is okay all right so i'm going to take it a bit further to talk about the symptoms and the damaging effects of imposter syndrome because someone might say well what's the big deal i don't want to be proud yes abby people say that and it's a valid, it's a valid argument that if you, if you, if you enter with your chest, uh, <laughs> with your chest out like this, like, Hey, look at me. I deserve this. I earned this, etc., etc. That that's pride. Obviously we don't want to be swinging at either extreme. Extremes are not good. It's good to be balanced, to walk right in the middle. Okay. Walk in the middle. The same way the Bible says that the grace of God has been revealed unto us. He said we are saved by grace through faith. So grace initiated the salvation and brought it to us. But it was also our faith that connected with it. Do you understand? So there's a balance. You can't say, oh, it is all God. Right? And on the other hand, you can't say, oh, it is all me. Either, either extremes are wrong. It is not all God. Listen. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. You know me. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that I'm probably the biggest advocate of God that you know. I'm like Voton. I'm the defender instead of the universe. I'm the defender of God. All right. I would defend God. <laughs> I would defend God to the hilt. 
all right he's a good god he's a good father i love him i trust him with everything i just know that he's just so good however however to say that everything happens as god will will it to happen is absolutely not true it's absolutely not true we have choices to make we have a say we have a say in the matter so do you understand so we can't swing on both extremes so someone might say there's nothing wrong you know with um um being what's that word reclining being um there's a word it will come to me and literally not stepping out and and say oh it is me it is me it is me because that's pride the extreme of pride is to say listen it is only me i'm an island um i did this all by my strength all by myself in my strength that in itself has problems and i've talked about pride and ego so many times on this podcast for you to know that is not what i'm talking about that in the bible says that pride goes before a fall if somebody has come to the point where they have believed that it is only them that has accomplished something it is only because of their power their intelligence their strength they should watch out because the very next step they take is going to land them in a ditch that is what the bible says and on the other hand this whole idea of oh it's nothing to do with me oh it is other people oh it is only the grace of god no it says by grace we are saved through faith not of ourselves the grace is you can't boast because you are not the one that created the grace but you are the one that responded to it and god is also actually the one that gave you the ability the faith to respond so ultimately god deserves the glory but you have a part to play so the two extremes are bad <laughs> walk in the middle walk in the middle where you appreciate and you accept the contribution of people of god into your life without which you would not have had that success in the first place but you also acknowledge the role that you played in getting to that success and i'm going to show you that if you do not live your life like that if you keep putting all your successes on other people and on everything outside of yourself you will run into problems okay the high ego the you will run into problems that you, literally you would it's it's called a ceiling you 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 get to a point where you would, the thing will just basically peg you back down and you will never be able to rise above it until you break that way of thinking so what are the symptoms of the damage and the damaging effects of the imposter syndrome Number one, number one, as I alluded to, you feel like your success or your progress up to this point or the fact that something wonderful, something good has happened in your life, you have a beautiful marriage or whatever it is, your children are doing well, etc., etc., etc. You feel like it was a mistake or luck or as Christians say, it was only God who okay it was only god or people look at you in fact they look at you they think the same and you said you agree with them you agree with them i say listen i i don't even know how i got here all right you are you are c-suite level you know in a multinational and you're saying and um, someone asked you how did you get here i said ah, it was only the grace of god no it was not only the grace of god and i'm going to show you um why you should stop saying that <laughs> why you should stop saying that because it's not true i'm going to show you from the scriptures and i'm going to show you the effect the damaging effect that it has so essentially when people respond like that when they say oh maybe somebody made a mistake ah, you know you, you make a joke like <laughs> they also find out i don't know who will promote somebody like me you may think you are joking but there's something in your heart that actually believes what you're saying you think it's luck you think oh they looked at you and you know they thought okay the the there's that there aren't that many black people on the board so let's just appoint this one to come and you know add a bit of multicultural whatever to the board a bit of color to it that's why they picked me you know this kind of things etc essentially you find it difficult to accept the role that you played in that success that's the first symptom right any of this you don't need to have more than one if i say the first one and it, <laughs> it sounds like you then yes just say put your hand up and say yes jesus deliver me from imposter syndrome so this is the first one successes that you've experienced in your life if you look back you always thought that you it wasn't really you it wasn't really you okay it wasn't really you so essentially you find it difficult to accept whatever role you played in that success but listen to this it is the bible that teaches us in titus 2 11 that the grace of god 
that brings salvation, right? So the grace, remember I said, oh, it is all, it is all God. It is all God. Nothing to do with me. It was just all God. Okay. It says the grace of God that brings salvation has what appeared to all men. That's what Titus 2.11 New King James Version says. It says it has appeared to all men. And that scripture goes on to now says, because this grace has appeared to you, do this, do this, do this, do this. Now, if the grace has appeared to all men, meaning all human beings, but we know that not all human beings are saved. Why? If it's only God, if God is the one that only does anything and we human beings have nothing to do with it, if the grace that brings salvation has already appeared to all men, why are all men not saved? Meaning man has a role to play. So you cannot remove yourself from it. You can't say, oh, no, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. Or you say, oh, it's my team. You know, you, you, you give credit where it's due, but don't exclude yourself. Do you understand? So the thing is, if you keep talking like that, if you keep putting um, the, the responsibility for that success, on other people and remove yourself and say oh it is just it is it is other people who was lucky what maybe it's a mistake or whatever it is what happens is two things two things if you do not acknowledge the role that you played in that success two things will begin to happen number one you will feel incapable of handling challenges that come your way whilst in that role so if somebody was promoted from a middle manager to becoming a senior leader and they are dealing with imposter syndrome, say, hey, you know, sweet, just, I, I don't deserve it. There's, you know, I, I, I'm just not capable. I'm just not capable. When challenges come and they will come. So the challenges that hit at that particular level, because the person has not owned that success, because they don't believe that there is something inside them that is capable of dealing or, or, or dealing with issues or playing at that level, they will obviously shrink back. That's what I was looking for. They will shrink back and they say, no, 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 I can't handle this. And guess what? They will sabotage that level their success at that level and before you know it that person has been demoted back to see to to middle management because they refuse to own and accept that ah, ah, i have built the capacity to be able to be here i deserve to be here because when you believe you deserve to be somewhere when something comes to tell you you don't deserve it in terms of challenges you will rise up and say no i deserve to be here and then you go and deal and tackle deal with that challenge and tackle it Okay, so if you if you if you don't if you remove yourself from it and you say no 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 this success has nothing to do with me it was because my sponsor connected me with this blah 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 not that oh I actually built the capacity right the second thing that would happen is you will not be able to replicate the success in your own life or teach other people to achieve the same if you keep saying it was only God and I had this conversation actually a while ago with someone and um the person had just been promoted into a senior leadership role and because me i'm a queen of systems and processes okay i you know don't come and do blah 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 abracadabra i say oh blah, 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 and then result and i'm like okay thank you but how did you produce it why because i want to learn how to produce it myself i want to teach other people to produce it so if you can't tell me how you did it just stay on one side because something is coming to carry that thing for me even if you yourself don't know how you got there so i was having this conversation with this person and i'm like what what did you do i said what are the steps um and he you know he, he he basically could not he could not answer me he was like oh you know it, it, it was really nothing i did it was just the grace of god it was just it was just my time it was just ex and, you know those kind of christianese and i looked at this person and i and i basically said you need to sit down you need to meditate on the process right you need to sit down and meditate and document the process that got you here because if you don't do that you will never be able to replicate this success this is as high as you would go and number one even though that's bad enough number number two the second thing is you will not be able to teach other people 
So if somebody invites you to come and speak and teach, you know, and inspire and teach middle managers to be able to go into top leadership, you will not know what to say. You will say, well, just trust God. That's the kind of thing you'll be saying. Just believe God. Just trust God. Just do your best. Just, you know, keep working hard and it will be useless information to them. It will be useless because you haven't owned that success and therefore you have no idea of how it happened. And because you don't know how it happened, you can't replicate it. When Jesus, um, come, when, um, Jesus told Peter and, 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 and the lot to go out and cast out their net, right? When they caught the multitude of fish, Jesus said to them, now you have the miracle, but guess what? I'm going to now make it fishers of men. So I'm going to teach you the process of catching fish. This one was just a miracle that came bah, like that. If I ask you to go and replicate it, you can cast your net on the right side as long as much as you want. If I didn't say it, it won't happen. However, without me following you about and saying, cast your net, I want to now make you fishers of me. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to lay out the process so that you can keep doing it over and over again. Do you understand? So that, that's what happens, right? You feel the first symptom and the damaging effects is you feel like it is all a mistake. It is luck. It is all, it is only God, only God, oh, if not for the grace of God. Oh. And we say things like that as Christianese, meaning I did nothing. God just literally threw down the promotion from heaven on me. I don't know what I did. How will you go to the next level if you don't know what you did? Does that mean God is, God is partial? So the people that have been praying for, for promotion, why didn't God throw on them too? Just what I'm saying. Why didn't God just say, ah, they've been praying, oh, take. And then he just wrote down uh, promotions. Yeah, you take. That means it's partial. It must be something that you did to access that grace of God that was released. The same way the grace for salvation has appeared to all men, but not everybody is saved. Only a certain amount of people have reached out in faith to take that grace. So there is a response from your part that brought about that success. And you need to sit down, think about it, document it so that you can reproduce it. Okay. Now, um, world renowned actress, you know, you most likely would know her, uh, Natalie Portman described this feeling of imposter syndrome when she went to study at Harvard. So she was already an actress, probably quite well known at the time. Then she went to, to, to study at Harvard. She said, I felt like there had been some mistake that I wasn't smart enough to be in this company of people that every time I opened my mouth, I would have to prove that I wasn't just a dumb actress. Now this is what happens, right? Imposter syndrome says, no, they just, you know, I'm sure how about they saw your name and say, ah, let's take a, let's take a, do you understand? Not knowing that, not trusting the system that it is a rigorous system. And that's how life is. Life does not give you anything for free. Life gives you what you have built the capacity for. And I'm going to talk about that later. Do you understand? Life gives you the ability, the capacity, what you have built your capacity for. So Harvard took her because she had demonstrated that she can fulfill the requirement of studying at Harvard. But her brain was telling her, no, 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 no. You are not smart. You are not smart. They just picked you because of your name. Now, imagine if she carried that thought around. Imagine if she didn't deal with that thought and she kept carrying it around. She would have shown up in class discussions and assignments like what? like a dumb actress, like her brain was telling her that she was. Okay. The second symptom and damaging effect of imposter syndrome is you feel like your success is no big deal. So you sort of dismiss it. <laughs> you downplay your success. You discount it. You explain it away and say, oh, no, that was just easy. You know, anybody can do it. You give all the credit to your team and remove yourself right? Or to your boss and you remove yourself. You give all the credit to everybody. You will name everybody, including the receptionist at, at the door and the doorman and the parking assistant, but you will not name yourself as part of the success. You have a hard time accepting compliments where, you know, your boss comes and says, that was a fantastic job. I did. Oh no, no, no. It was nothing. Oh no, no, no. It just, you know, it took me two minutes to put that thing together. Meanwhile, <laughs> Meanwhile, you probably spend 
day sleepless nights putting it together but yeah no 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 you just basically dismiss your success as no big deal that is a symptom of what imposter syndrome number three you are constantly tormented by the question with it last so you are constantly afraid that this thing will last it will so crumble this ah, there's no way there's no way the, the success that i'm enjoying oh my goodness it will soon crumble it will soon crumble it can't last it's too good to be true that's a symptom of imposter syndrome i'm just going to run through the list number four is you constantly feel the need to prove yourself as worthy of the success you want to prove yourself i mean naturally let's say you gain a promotion right you want to do well that's not what i'm talking about i'm saying you have this need this unhealthy drive for success to prove that you deserve it the problem is you don't need to prove anything you already deserve it now all you need to do is just lean into the role and just bear fruit the same way a tree is planted a tree does not need to like start growing and say mm, i want to bear fruit no it's simply planted because it's a tree because it has reached its maturity and when the time for fruit bearing comes it just simply bears fruit the tree does not need to prove anything do you understand if you the 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 deception is oh I, I don't belong here so i need to prove myself and how many times even though this sounds noble i say i hear people say it all the time and i think it's part of the problem people say all the time that as a black person as a black man as a black woman you have to you have to work twice as hard just to prove that you deserve a seat at the table i've never in my life held that view of myself i've never held that view of myself that oh and i think again it is the gift <laughs> of growing up in nigeria where i didn't know i was black there was nothing like black in nigeria i grew every it, all the faces were black i didn't want to understand what black meant it's a con it's a new concept <laughs> when i moved to united kingdom not even immediately that I say, hey, okay, somebody's black. Me, I just say, okay, this person is not, is not like me. Uh, do you understand? It just, it was not a concept, but it became a concept. But after my I ideologies, after my way of thinking was already set and formed. So when I came here, I honestly did not see myself as black. I just continued as the way I had been raised that this is a human being. That's a human being. Yes, you speak with a different accent. Yes, you look slightly different. Your skin is lighter than mine. You know, you are a native English person. I'm native Nigerian person, etc., etc. But no, no, no. It was not the idea of, oh my God, I'm here. I'm the only black person. And I had to prove myself more than anybody else. That is what is called imposter syndrome. It's imposter syndrome and if you have that mentality that is exactly what your reality will be you will find yourself having to work twice as hard just to receive the same kind of results as people that are not like you why because that is what you believe your experience is a is a is a mirror of what you believe your experience is a mirror of what you believe honestly as in, 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 for me, in any kind of promotion I experienced in my, in the career space, as a, in my profession, I never thought, oh, because I'm black, I need, it never occurred to me because I did not see myself as black. I didn't. The, it was simply the gift of ra being raised in a country where it was never an issue. All I saw was, okay, this is what they're doing in order to, to get the promotion. Okay, I, this is what I need to do. That's always how I saw it. I never saw as, okay, I need to, no, honestly. The thing is, if you constantly feel the need to prove yourself as worthy of that success that you already are worthy of, that you already are deserving of, right? This is how it, it, it manifests itself. So this is the damaging effect. It will come across as an unhealthy drive for success that negatively impacts your health, your family, and your team. Instead of working as normal and just being diligent and being committed like a normal person, you will feel the need and the drive to go over and beyond what everybody else is doing. So if people on your team or at your level, uh, all of you on senior leadership, if someone else 
is putting in 10 hours you feel like no because i'm black because i i don't feel deserving and worthy i need to put in 20 hours and you still get the same results as a person that's putting in 10 hours so you wasted the additional 10 hours because you feel the need to prove yourself so it's an unhealthy drive and you keep working and working and working and working. You keep taking on other people's role. You refuse to delegate. These are the symptoms of this thing. You refuse to delegate. You will take up all the work yourself. You will micromanage because you must get that result. Say by force, by force, by force, you must work harder than everybody else. You must be better at everything and, and than everybody else in order to just deserve a seat at the table the table that you're already sitting at that you already deserve can, can you see where the problem lies you're already there you already deserve it but you're saying oh for me to deserve it <sighs> but you're already there so what do you need to prove you have nothing to prove you just need to settle into the role and begin to bear fruit and you begin to bear fruit so when people carry around that chip on their shoulder like i have to prove because i'm black or because i'm a woman i must prove what happens is you will you will literally begin to work yourself to the bone you will put in more hours than everybody else and you will justify to yourself and say listen in this country ah if you're black if you don't you know put in they won't it's not true it's because you see that way that it is your experience and your reality I just cited myself as an example. I, in fact, I worked less <laughs> simply because me, when I was going into my job, my first professional career, my first job, I, I started my first, my, my only professional career with, with a three month old baby. I've said this before on the podcast. My daughter was three months old. I didn't have time to be saying I, I must prove <laughs> no because I have a baby to go back home to. So I even made a deal with God that listen, we have to multiply this thing. If I put in one, it must bring out ten. Not because I'm being lazy, but because I have a child. So I've never really thought of it that way. I, I in fact, if you if you weigh out everything on the skills, I probably put in less, but I was achieving more results. And they're like they were coming to me as in. Ugh, how you achieve because i always believe that i deserve the seat at the table <laughs> in fact my father owns the table what are you talking about because i see myself first of all as a son of the most high god and the god of this world he owns everything he owns everything so he's my father and i <laughs> i'm at the table and he has given me the strength and the intelligence and i'm showing up and using the strength and the intelligence that has given me to produce results i absolutely deserve a seat at this table that's how i've always seen it so this whole idea of if I'm female or I'm black, I need to work twice as hard. The reason why you are working twice as hard is because you believe you do have to work twice as hard. And that is your reality. There are people that are not working twice as hard and are still getting the same results. So I think we need to be very careful because we jump on this bandwagon because it's, it's a fad for people to say things like that. Think, sit down and think about it carefully before you repeat it and then jump on the bandwagon, right? The family will suffer because you won't see your children because you feel, oh, you know, I must do this. You want to be on every call. You want to, do you understand? These are symptoms of imposter syndrome because you feel if I'm, if I show, don't show up for even one call, they will think I'm incompetent and I'm, I don't deserve to be here. No, go and rest. Relax. You're already there. You already, you already deserve, you own the table. Your father owns the table. Do you understand? All right. It will also impact your team. As I, as I said, you will not delegate. You will micromanage because you will aim for perfectionists of perfection. <laughs> you will aim for perfection. You will be a perfectionist, right? Number five, the five, the fifth and the final symptom and damaging effects of imposter syndrome is you will find it difficult to ask for help that's the symptom if you find it difficult to ask for help then most likely you are dealing with imposter syndrome why let me expand on that when i say difficult to, to ask for help so you're afraid that asking for help would give people or colleagues proof of what surely they have so suspected which is that you are an imposter that you can't do the job so you just got promoted into a new role 
you don't know anything about it, right? Because it's new and you're starting to learn. You earned the place there. But obviously, it's new. You still need to learn. But rather than go and ask, you don't want to give people the impression or confirm the impression that, what did we tell you? Why is, she, she can't even answer this question. <laughs> Do you understand? So, <laughs> to avoid being found out, you basically just withdraw to yourself and you try and you agonize over over the problems and challenges that you're facing. Something that you could literally have a conversation, one conversation with somebody that is seasoned at that level and they will help you unravel it in one conversation. You agonize over it over and over. You spend weeks, sleepless nights, dealing with it, trying to figure it out. You eventually would, right? But you could have, if you could have only taken one conversation. Why? Because you don't want people to think you're stupid. You don't want them to think, oh, why did we promote this one? She doesn't know anything or he doesn't know anything. This is the symptom of imposter syndrome. So those are the five symptoms. And we're going to move on now to how to actually overcome imposter syndrome. First of all, how do you overcome imposter syndrome? Number one, I have said here, written down here, deal with it at the source. Deal with it at the source. Now, I'm going to expand on that so that you can understand what I'm saying. Deal with it at the source. What's the source? Well, if you think about it this way, the very nature of the word imposter. Imposter means someone that, you know, that doesn't belong somewhere. So, um, if, if everybody... Um, you're supposed to attend a work function and they had already said the dress code and said everybody must wear a black suit and um, blue tie and somebody walks off the streets wearing a green dress and a yellow hat and then you look at them like that person's an imposter right they're not supposed to be here because they stand out so the person to, to label someone an imposter it has to be cast from the outside if you understand what i'm saying it has to be a judgment in the context of an environment right so the very nature of the word imposter means it is someone else who is identifying that person as an imposter or as not belonging so that means those thoughts of um imposture is originating from somewhere apart from yourself they're not coming from you just because it's in your head and it's in your brain does not mean it's coming from you. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that there are four sources. It says, born not of the will of man, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of something, but of the will of God. So um, I haven't taught on this in this podcast. Well, on one of the episodes, I'm going to talk to you about how thoughts, there are four sources of things that happen in your thoughts and in this life. One of them is God. One is Satan. One is just a natural process of life. So just because there's a thought coming into your mind does not mean that it is coming from you. It does not mean that that is really how you feel about yourself. The source of it, the person that is calling you an imposter is Satan. Why? How do I know? Because that's his MO. That's how this guy operates. It's his most effective strategy. Imposter syndrome. Satan knows what it is or he uses it well. Who is the source? Satan. So he attacks your identity. First example, Jesus had literally been validated as the son of God. I mean, the heavens opened, the dove came down, you know, the Holy Spirit in the form of the dove and rested on Jesus and, and God spoke from heaven and John was there and I'm sure there were angels around, etc., etc. And God spoke in this beautiful baritone voice, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. As in, literally, his identity had just been confirmed. That even John was like, this is the one that I said was coming. I can't even carry his sandals. Hmm? Abby? So, new level, Abby. Promotion. As in, he had just entered into his full identity as a son of God. What did Satan do next? You know the Bible, so you know what he did next. Immediately, the Bible says immediately, Satan came and said, if you are the son of God, meaning imposter, this one is not a son of God. Prove to me. But Jesus said, see this one, oh, proof, proof for what? He asked me to prove who I already am. Did you see what I said about this whole, you have to work twice as hard as a black person or female person to listen. No, is that what Jesus did? Did Jesus turn stone into bread? No, 
No, he didn't have to prove anything because he already was. He already was the son of God. He just said, get lost. Get out of here. That's what he said. He said, I'm not going to do it. Why should I prove anything? Right? He said, jump down. If you are the son of God, jump down to prove that truly, truly the angels will come and save you. And he said, why would I want to jump down? The angels are here. I know I can see them. They are right here. Why should I jump to show you? I don't need to prove anything. So Satan, the source of those thoughts, because like I said, to identify someone as an imposter, he has to be someone that says, oh, we are the ones that are the right people. You are the imposter. So the thoughts that are coming, that are calling you an imposter are not originating from you. So know what the source is. Don't just think it is you. Do you understand? One of the most profound cinematic scenes I have watched that has never left me and made such an impact on my spiritual life was an episode of Touch by an Angel. You know that story, that series, TV series of um, the angels that came as human beings, etc. And um, one of the angels, I think it was Andrew, the angel of death. There was a man on a sick bed or something and his family member i don't remember the scene sir but basically i think somebody was in a hospital bed a man and his family member was sitting in the chair visiting him and and see this this was how it happened the angel wanted to pass a message to you know to to the man so yeah i think he had prayed and then god wanted to you know give him an answer or something so andrew went beside the man and started whispering in his ear so he said you know you 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 want to i don't i think it was like something that you want to reconcile with your daughter you know you want to reconcile with your daughter and then the man looked up and said hmm i want to reconcile with my daughter and then he spoke and said can we please you know can you forgive me and say you, you want to forgive your daughter i said hmm i want to forgive my daughter and he opened his mouth and said i want to i want to forgive you for everything so basically the words came from the angel he, he didn't he what he didn't the man that was hearing the words didn't think oh the angel said i should forgive no he came as first person like i want to forgive my daughter and he was you, i hope you understand <laughs> i hope i've explained it well i hope i've explained it well do you understand so it comes like satan will speak to you in first language so you say i i I, I I don't deserve this, but he's him that is whispering in your ear and say you don't deserve it. But the way he says it is that it's as if it's coming from you. It's not coming from you. Do you know that the temptation of Jesus? I don't think Satan appeared physically. Oh, he was not there. I don't believe he was there. I believe it was in the thoughts. The thoughts came that you know throw yourself down. I said no, I'm not throwing myself down. Get out of here. Do you understand? He comes disguised. Another example is when Peter showed up. Peter said, you know, you are not dying. Do you, th do you think Peter would have said what he said if he thought it was Satan talking to him? If Satan had said, listen, go and tell, go and tell Jesus that he's not dying, he's not going anywhere. No, you know, the question is, who is that talking to me? But I'm sure Satan implanted and said, there's no way. No, he's not dying. So he says it in first person. So that's his M.O. That's how he operates. Do you understand? So when you identify who the source is, you can literally deal with it and say, no, I reject this in the name of Jesus. Yes, I have things to learn. Yes, I can't claim to know everything, but I'm not an imposter. I deserve to be here. I deserve to have a seat at this table. Because God has given me this promotion and I deserve to be here. This is my identity. Satan, I will not allow you give me a false identity. I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. You have to identify him as a source and deal with him accordingly. Now, I want to, sh I want to read to you how I want to give you an example of, as to exactly how this plays out. Okay, Matthew 13, 54 to 58. And I'll just read this. It says, Jesus came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogue. Now watch this closely. So it says, Jesus, and so it says, the people that heard him were astonished and said, where did this man get such wisdom and miraculous powers? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't this Mary? Isn't his mother Mary? Aren't his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? 
blah 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 aren't you sisters with us and they took offense at him follow me and the bible says that jesus did not do many miracles because of their unbelief okay let's see let's let me break down how this happened so jesus was there already doing what right he deserved to be called a prophet why because he was teaching with such wisdom he was prophesying he was healing the sick they were already they could see the results do you understand they could see the results but then the thoughts so the voices that rose up against jesus were the voice that said uh -uh, who do you think you are are you not just the carpenter's son meaning you don't deserve it to be here oh. you don't deserve to be here <laughs> you're not really a prophet you just momentarily forgot who you are who you really are is carpenter's son son of mary that i don't know maybe had profession or didn't have profession i don't know housewife johnson so even though there was evidence plenty of evidence that jesus was a prophet that he was a son of god that he had wisdom that he was achieving all this result plenty of evidence the voices of accusation that rose up said no 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 no. i don't care what the evidence says you are simply the carpenter's son and as a result of that it says that productivity or fruitfulness was absolutely limited so what Satan really wants to do is he wants to render you inoperative at that new level. He wants to render you inoperative. If you accept those thoughts and say, oh, it's true. Ah, if Manzi just has said, ah, it's true. I'm just a capital son. He would never, do you understand? So the fact that there was, the, the fact that he was, um, those people could not receive their miracles is basically because they had accepted that thought about Jesus. And as a result of that, the word of God was unfruitful in their lives. So that's a, first of all, identify the source. It's not coming from you. Nobody can identify someone as an imposter except somebody, a third party. You look at someone and say, that person is an imposter. So if imposter syndrome thoughts are coming into your mind, you need to understand that they're not originating from you. They're coming from a third party that is trying to identify you as an imposter and you have every right to reject that identity to reject and say i'm not an imposter i deserve to be here exactly the same way jesus did do the same thing to satan tell him to get lost number two the second way to overcome imposter syndrome is never completely remove yourself from the equation of success i talked quite at length about this in one of the symptoms you've been promoted your team just gained a fantastic results in a project and you 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 ascribe praise to everybody but yourself you say no it is this one it is this one it is because of this person's this it is because of this person's that and blah 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 and you had nothing to do with it i'm just here for the you know we make jokes like i'm just here for the food stop talking like that because you are confusing you are distorting your self image you are distorting your self image right give credit where it's due so don't be the ego egotistical narcissistic somebody that will take all the credit and refuse to acknowledge the contributions of people and the contribution of the grace of god that even made it possible in the first place that's ego don't be that person but on the other hand don't give away all of the credit because you had something to do with it right especially christians all things are by God's grace, yes. <laughs> but as I said, your response to that grace was also crucial to success. So you are part of the equation. So tell yourself the truth that you are there because of your capacity to be there. You have built the capacity to be there and that's why you're there. Let me read something to you just to butcher this point. First Corinthians 15, 9 to 10, Paul was speaking. Paul said, when I started this journey, right? I was the least of the apostles. I'm not even fit to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted God's church. Now listen to this. So that's why I started from, oh, I was like the, the thing on that, you know, the gum under the shoe. I was, I was worse than that. But he said, but God's grace has made me who I am. So you acknowledge the grace of God that has brought you to that point. But 
Paul didn't stop there. Paul didn't say, oh, only the grace of God. I had nothing to do with it. No, that's deceptive. It's not true. He says, God's grace made me what I am. And that grace, the reason why it made me what I am is because that grace, I'm reading verbatim what the Bible says, that grace was not wasted on me. So it's possible for God to release his grace into someone's life. But if the person is lazy, the person is not committed, the person will slander people, they will do all sorts of things, and that grace will go wasted and it will not produce any fruit. So you that you've taken the grace of God to produce something good that gives God glory, it means that you are doing something right. So don't write yourself off. He said, instead, this is Paul still speaking, he said, the grace was not wasted on me. Instead... I worked harder, harder than all the others. It was not I who did it, but God's grace was with me. So he, he never at any point said, oh, it is me. I'm, I'm so super. I'm so wonderful that I was able to do this. No, he acknowledged the source of the grace. But he also said, because of the grace, this is what I did. So it's a combination of the grace of God and my own response to the grace that produces beautiful things on the earth. So if you remove yourself from the equation, you will feel like an imposter. You will feel like an imposter. And those effects that I talk about, you will just continue to experience them in your life. A tree is known by its fruit. Meaning if you are bearing fruit at a particular level, which which manifests itself as you start a new business or you gain a promotion or whatever it is, it means that the tree is rooted somewhere. There is something right with the tree. Do you understand? There is something right with that tree. This was literally for me where God pulled my ears. As in, this was where God showed me many years ago that I didn't even know it was called imposter syndrome. I didn't know it was called imposter syndrome. It's a modern term, I, you know, until I started reading up as a coach, etc. I didn't know that's what it's called. But I, I remember after experiencing such a dramatic, miraculous transformation in my life, coming into the UK, if you know my story, re- listen to episode one if you don't. Um, so after that season, I entered into a season where things were just like bam, 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 as in the progress, the, I was just progressing like one level to the other in my career, in, in my finances, you know, you know, investments, etc. Things were good. And then I hit a point where everything just flatlined. Everything went dry. I felt like I had, you know, I was stuck again, you know, in my career. It wasn't, I was trying to gain promotions in the next level. I was just stuck. My finances were okay. Yes. I, you know, was working, but you know, the investments, I'm like, well, I just felt dry. And I hit that level where everything was just like, I'm like, God, I need another touch, Lord. You know, God, you don't man do to me what you did, you know, back then in Nigeria, how you took me to another level, blah, 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 blah. And I was saying all those things, oh. And I could just feel God one day just say, <laughs> look at me. I said, this is my, this is my child. Hey, he basically just, I don't remember the conversation now. Uh, maybe he showed me in the Bible. I don't remember. But it was something along these lines. I see this one. See this one. So you think, oh, that <laughs> every time I want to do something in your life, I'm just going to come and sprinkle angel dust on you and whoa, 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 and the thing will just manifest like that. I said, no. He said, go back. He said, it's laziness. You have been lazy. You're just waiting for me, sitting down and raising your hand. I said, God, do it again. He said, I'm not doing anything again. He said, go back. Go back to that period of your life where you experienced the explosion. Where you explain the supernatural transformation that lasted probably three years, three, four years, where you were just like bum 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 bum, success after success, increase after increase. Said hey, now that that has run out, what you need to do is go back and meditate and meditate on that process. And he said, document it. And do you know that is where all of this that I'm teaching today, my coaching program, gems, goal execution, and mastery system, super burner woman, anything that I'm doing today that has been helpful to you, it came out of that time of meditation. God said, Stop being lazy, just looking for miracle after me, miracle hunter. Go back and meditate on the process and understand how it happened so that you can replicate it. And that's one of the things that I absolutely pride myself and, you know, the grace of God on 
for gems gems is a replicatable is that a word <laughs> process as in i will not do anything my team understand they know if we do anything i'm like processize it can we do it again because if we can't do it again it was a fluke so what is the process do you understand so god said go back meditate on it write out the process and i began to think about the process like ah so it wasn't just it just happened blah 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 like that i said so okay this is what i did first and then this is what and then over the years he helped me refine the process which became gems and essentially what happened what happened when he showed me that was i took the same process and i said okay i need to enter breakthrough into another level of supernatural advancement i took the same process that i used when i was what n almost nine months pregnant stuck and all those things in a terrible place pit of despair in lagos i applied it again and i again broke through into a new level but if you don't own it if i just say oh it was only god god just delivered me god said i delivered you but you played a part and there was a process go and learn the process replicate it the same grace that was upon you i haven't taken it away the grace is still there you just need to reapply your own part and the grace will kick in again so that is how you overcome imposter syndrome don't remove yourself from any equation of success Look at the parts that you played. What did you do that opened up that door? That way you will know what to do the next time or even teach someone to be able to walk through such an open door. And finally, number three, number three is very simple. Demystify that feeling. Okay. You are not alone. The most successful people, you know, that have walked this earth from biblical times, people like Moses, remember how god was trying to convince moses right do you remember oh god i can't talk oh god say somebody else this <laughs> eh? god moses i said moses that god had been working on for how many years was he in that place that god saw and said you are ready and said no i'm not ready i can't stand before very say somebody else god i'm god i'm sure god wanted to like box him and, and blow him a little bit and say what's wrong with this one imposter syndrome like oh, i don't this i don't no 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 i don't and see how when he showed up see what he accomplished people like oprah they have said this is how they feel or have felt but they dealt with it and they moved on all right in fact howard schultz the president of starbucks said practically every ceo he knows feels the same way they deal with imposter syndrome at different stages in their life in fact I, he said and i quote very few people whether you've been in that job before or not get into the seat and believe today that they are now qualified to be the ceo so they're not going to tell you that but it's true in other words he doesn't know anybody that gets into a brand new role where they receive the promotion and they don't feel like an imposter said so they may not own up to it they may fake it till they make it they may say i'm absolutely confident i you know we're going to do a fantastic job they may use all the right words but inside they're like oh my god oh my god oh my god, oh my god i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> he said everybody feels like that so the third way to overcome imposter syndrome is don't don't go and hang yourself for feeling like that everybody at least almost everybody feels like that at different stages all right once you identify and you demystify it you just need to turn it around and say well the fact that i feel like that does not make it true the fact that satan comes and whisper to me that i don't deserve a seat at the table does not make it true does not make it true i deserve to be here i have the capacity i just need to start learning all right you turn it on its head you say i just say yeah i acknowledge that i don't know everything i'm not supposed to know anything everything i'm I'm here to learn so i'm going to start learning so that i can then become the best that i can and then be ready build my capacity so that i can easily transition into the next level of my whatever is career or business or whatever so imposter syndrome has no place has no place none whatsoever in your life kick it to, to the curb get rid of it <laughs> and not once and forever is something that you probably need to do frequently so if if a voice comes and whispers and tells you that you don't deserve a seat at the table tell that voice to get lost 
that I, in fact, not only do I deserve a seat at the table, I own the table because the owner of the table is my father and whatever belongs to my father belongs to me. So stop trying to prove that you deserve a seat at the table. Okay. That's what I've come to share. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'll be back with the next episode of the podcast. Bye.